We're not going to Paris. Andre. Come here. Sit your ass down. Stand up. You do not listen to her, you listen to me. Land this plane. Trust me, she's not gonna shoot you. I am. Prikin samordim. Who's gonna fly the plane? You don't need a pilot. We can jump and survive. I am not jumping from a plane. <laughs> You really want to do this, kid? You're very good. What's your name? See, you're already healing faster. This is real. I got people that love me. People that are gonna worry. I'm a Marine. They think I went AWOL. They're not a Marine anymore. They're going to lock you up. Hello and welcome to the SCAD Savannah Film Festival. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, my name is Devin Kogan. I am a staff writer at Entertainment Weekly and I am so excited to be here with the creative team behind the Netflix film, The Old Guard. Um, I am joined by director Gina prince Bythewood, editor Terrilyn Shropshire and VFX supervisor Sarah Bennett. Thank you all so much for joining me. Thanks for having us. You were actually, I think you may have been the first person First journalist I spoke to uh, for the film way back, God, in June. 
I think it was, yeah. And so, and that was before the film came out. So I'm so excited to be able to get to talk to you now, now that it's out in the world and when we can talk about it a little bit. Um, I know we were hoping to be joined by Kiki Lane today. Uh, she can't make it, but she, she sends her best. Um, so I am so excited to talk to all of you about the film and the reaction so far, but, but I want to start by going back to the beginning, you know, Gino, what was it about this story that, that first intrigued you and, and what was it about, you know, making a big comic book action movie that, that really got you excited? Mm -hmm. Well, it was certainly a, a space that I had been looking to get into. I, when this script came, I had just just left Silver and Black. So clearly I I, I was looking to, to get into this world. And um, it's so interesting. I, I truly believe everything happens for a reason. And this script came literally right on the heels of that. And as I started to read, I didn't know anything about the graphic novel. So I was reading it fresh, which I, I'm, I'm grateful for. And I just fell in love with it so immediately. And uh, not only just the tone and the feel of it, how it kept surprising me, when we got to the kill floor, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> what is happening? Um, so I loved that it. it was two female leads. I loved um, that one of them was a young black female and uh, that just how organically diverse it was. And it just, it felt good. I enjoyed watching it. I mean, reading it and I was watching it in my head and I just, I got excited about the thought of being able to, you know, to make these characters alive and put them on screen and make it all real. Absolutely. What about you, Terrilyn and Sarah? What was it about, you know, this story that that initially, you know, got you excited and, and made you want to be a part of it? Um, I mean, for me, yeah, it's the again, as Gina said, the female leads, and it's an action film, and I, and I love those kind of films. Um, so that was uh, really exciting for me. And obviously, when I read scripts and get to work on sort of these films, I'm always looking to see what the visual effects are going to be. Um, and, uh, you know, it just, it all sounded kind of very exciting and, you know, I was looking forward to working with Gina as well. I've never worked with a female director. Um, so it, that was a big pull for me as well. Wow. <laughs> I popped your cherry. I hope it was, <laughs> <laughs> it was good. <laughs> you can only do that when there's only chicks on the call. <laughs> what about you, Terrilyn? What was it that, that first, you know, got you excited about, about this project? Well, you know, usually uh, I have the benefit of, of working some, with some really talented people. And when they contact you and say, I have a script uh, I want you to read, I, I, I'm immediately excited because I, I just trust their aesthetic so much and, and the things, the kind of stories that they want to tell. And um, I had kind of, I'd been on that journey with Gina on Silver and Black in terms of her kind of you know, preparing it and getting it ready and all of that. And so suddenly I, I get this, uh, I call from her saying, I have something I want you to read. And what was great about it is she didn't tell me much about what I was about to read. And I feel like I got the true benefit that unfortunately the audiences didn't get because by the time you go through marketing and press and everything, people kind of know this, what, what's happening. But I got the script for the old guard and I had a similar feeling of where I got to the kill floor and suddenly these people started coming to life and I said, what is this? And it was just so exciting to read the adventure, but also within it, it's wrapped up this, this kind of this story about characters that you cared about, right? And you, they had these kind of very, very broad histories and exciting, and yet they were vulnerable. And, and so it, it had the, the perfect, to me, alchemy of everything as an editor that you want to kind of work on. You want to work on really good stories, interesting characters, and you get to have a little bit of drama and action and love and all of that. So that, that, that was just, it was such a great read for me. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned how the film, one of the things I love about this film is how it, it does, it's that extraordinary mix of, you know, the big action packed comic book, you know, movie lore and history, but then you've also, it's, you've got these really grounded emotional stakes and these lovely character moments. Gina, how did you, you know, want to approach that, finding that tone and finding that balance between the two? Mm -hmm. it, it, it honestly, it, it came to me in the pitch when I met with Skydance, um, Skydance had found this, this project and developed it with Greg Rucka. Greg Rucka having written the graphic novel and then adapted uh, the screenplay, which rarely happens, um, but he's so good. And um, 
you know, I, I knew pretty quickly when I read it, I, I started to see it and I, I knew I wanted it to feel very grounded despite the fantastical conceit. And um, I, I remember saying in, in the pitch that for me in this film, the quiet moments are gonna be as important as the big set pieces. And that the more we cared about these characters and what they were all searching for, which I felt was so interesting in this kind of genre, the, the level of depth of the things that they were struggling with. Um, I really wanted to dive into that, but the more you care about characters, the more these big set pieces mean. And that uh, to be able to have all of that, the action and, and the emotion and the character building, all that being able to be entwined was, I mean, that was fun for me. Absolutely. And we saw at the beginning of this, uh, one of my favorite scenes in the film, which is that awesome plane fight where it's this really brutal, you know, fight between Charlize Theron's character and Kiki Lane. Um, tell us a little bit about, you know, how you wanted to approach that scene in particular. That, the plane fight is, you know, such a, it was such an interesting journey. Foremost, it was the first thing that we shot. And uh, I remember our, our brilliant first AD, Toby Hefferman, had come to me and, and said, hey, I have this idea. <laughs> Why don't we shoot this first? Um, and I was like, immediately like, hell no. Like, we got to build to that. Let's start with you know, the two people at a table so I can prove to this amazing crew I know what I'm doing. Um, but as, as he talked about, he talked about obviously how much the, the actors were training before we got on set and that we could just move right into that. It wouldn't be about them forgetting um, any of the choreography or, or not having a chance to work out. They were just in that mindset of, of action because they had been training you know, for months at, at that point. And uh, that seemed to really make sense. And part of me was like, if I could just knock this out in the way that it's in my head, that'll set the tone for the rest of the shoot. Hopefully, you know, set it in a good way. Um, but I'm not gonna lie, it was intimidating, certainly. And, and Tammy Riker, I mean, she and I, it was just a knowing that we were opening with that. It was such an incredible focus, but we actually, starting with it gave us the ability, um, you know, we had we had great stunt doubles for, for both Charlize and Kiki, and we were able to shoot the whole plane fight with those two as practice before we even got the actors. And I don't know that many have that opportunity to do it, but that was so invaluable to see what would work, what angles would work to tell the story, to tell the, the groundedness of it, to be able to show off the athleticism of our two actors who have been working so hard um, because I, I knew I wanted to see them doing the stunts and the punches and, and the kicks and the fight because the more we can see them really doing it, they can play the performance of it. And I think, I mean, I love the, the fighting in it, but I feel like the story of the fight is what has made so many people enamored by that scene because it is telling a lot about character and revealing character both uh, for both characters. Absolutely, it's grounded in that, in that sense of, sort of character. Uh, Terry Lynn, what, tell us a little bit about how you wanted to approach that scene in, um, cause it's just really, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot happening. How did you, from an editing standpoint, how did you want to approach that scene? Yeah, well, the gauntlet was thrown down, you know, immediately. And, uh, what I really wanted to do was to tell the story of the fight. I mean, I knew that ultimately the way that Gina and the crew, everybody was shooting and I had a little bit of a taste of what it was going to be because of the stunt, you know, the stunt biz. And, and so I had a sense of the choreography, but, um, you know, something takes on a completely different life, of course, when you have the actors take on those characters and things that are happening within the scene itself that are both expected and unexpected. And so for me, when I, when I start to watch those dailies, that's what I'm really looking for. Um, the choreography will be there. The, 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 the correctness of the way that the, the punch is thrown or received or the movement of the actors will be there um, because, you know, you're relying obviously on Gina and the stunt coordinator and, and, you know, everybody to be doing what, what they're supposed to be doing and doing it correctly. But what I really wanted to try to find was the emotion within the scene, the, um, the, the, those little reactions, those little surprises, you know, there's a moment where um, literally, you know, uh, Kiki is, is lit, land, you know, lands a punch on, on, on Charlize and Charlize takes a step back, but there's like a little trip. Right. And it's those kind of things that you start pulling in your selects. 
and you find those moments where you know they they are at their badass self but then one of them throws the other a little bit off you know off kilter and how the other reacts and kind of where to put the pauses in and where to allow them to kind of receive each other on a on a you know on a personal level on a character level and I think those are the things that you don't see in the stunt biz. Those aren't the things that you really see until you really start getting into the dailies and start building the scene as a character and who they are as characters. And then you build the action. For me, I build the action around that, right? Um, that's at least for the plane fight. I, I really wanted to approach it that way because it wasn't just about two women fighting. It was about two people who were kind of, you know, trying trying to fight, you know, basically you had, you had um, Andy trying, she could have taken down Kiki at any point, right? She could have taken down Niall at any point because she had that experience of millennium of fighting, right? And, but she was, she was testing her out and I had to show, show that, that, that dynamic, but also the dynamic of where, where, where Niall was also at that moment of the fight. Yeah. There's a playfulness to it almost, right? It's, it's serious and they're, beating the crap out of each other, but there's also like, there's there's a smile on Charlize's face. And I would imagine in the editing, it would be fun to find those little moments of, of playfulness. Yeah, well, also, it was really about tone, the tone. Yeah, we, I mean, I think, I don't think I'm wrong. That scene, editing it took the longest. So we shot it first, but we played with that scene for a very long time and it really was trying to find that perfect balance the perfect alchemy between between the fighting and the emotion and it's amazing how you just take one look out where you add just one look and how that can change the dynamic so you know certainly it was fun it was also terrifying um because you know my big <laughs> the biggest thing i was afraid of to show my two boys that that scene we kept waiting because i knew that other people may come in and watch it and be polite to us if it wasn't working. <laughs> I knew my boys would be brutally honest. And the fact that they watched it and were like, it was like, okay, we're good. That sets the tone, absolutely. And Sarah, we see at the at the end of the fight those those great shots of we see, you know, bodies putting themselves back together and bones healing. Tell us a little bit about how you wanted to approach that from a, a visual effects standpoint. Um, well, I mean, the main thing was, you know, Gene always said from the beginning it needed to look real and not fantastical um and you know and stay away from for you know being gory for the sake of being gory so um you know we researched a lot of sort of medical websites and looked at physically how things would break <laughs> heal and wounds yeah <laughs> which was pretty gross um <laughs> but you know we had to do it you know we had to feel real i mean the hardest thing i think was trying to you know, get them to regenerate uh, realistically in a short amount of time, you know, because obviously it'd take weeks and days. But I mean, you know, if it looks too fast, it looks comical. So it's kind of nice to be able to do it over, you know, one or two or three shots rather than trying to show it all in one go. So I think, you know, getting the timings right was really important. Um, and I think the hardest thing in that that scene was the, uh, the leg break. Um, when Andy breaks her leg, you know, and we looked at we did a few sort of iterations of that and it, you know, we had this big bendy sort of rubber leg, which, you know, when you looked at it, you started laughing and that wasn't the point of the scene at all. So it was really difficult to get that right. Um, it had to be, you had to read it as the audience, um, but it couldn't be, you know, bendy or comical. So, and also it broke on the cloth and it's really hard to show that like a bone sort of breaking and then how it sort of heals back up. So it was very, you know, we went kind of quite subtle in the end, but I think it worked really well. Um, you know, and I love, I love the elbow wounds and the way it heals, you know, I think it works really well in the end. And it, yeah, it's, it's pretty disgusting, but it's not, you know, for the sake of it, it's, it's sort of, you know, hopefully looks realistic. So um, yeah, it was good, good fun to do. <laughs> yeah. I feel like with the visual effects, you sort of set the tone for the film where it like, it has, like you said, it has to look realistic, but it, it can't be, you know, it, it, it sort of sets the tone for this story that it, that is very real and grounded in, in reality, but it also, it has a little bit of that fantastical quality to it, which, which I would imagine would be kind of a fun world to play in. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, it was always, for me, it was always sort of a drama and an action film. It wasn't about the visual effects. I think it was never really sold as that. So um, but, you know, there is that bit of fantasy to it with the immortality. So it's that kind of fine balance. And, you know, Gina was very clear that, you know, that they had to feel grounded and, you know, as real as possible. So, yeah, you yeah. know, the, the first when we were trying to figure out what regeneration would look like, 
um, and knowing that we wanted it to be biological and not magical, um, there was a lot of thinking of what it could be. And I remember Tammy Riker is actually, she sent me a video on YouTube of fruit rotting, a rotted fruit um, in reverse. And that was kind of the first step that I started sending to both Terry and Sarah, like, how can we make this into what we're doing? And, and for us, we wanted the healing, the natural process of healing um, to happen, something that takes a couple of weeks to happen within seconds. And it's one thing to say that, I, you know, we knew clearly that's what we wanted, but I, I'm still amazed that Sarah was able to make that real. And that's I can, why I'm, I'm, I mean, our crew was just so great. And it's, it's an amazing thing to, you know, have a vision, but then have such great collaborators that can help you do it. Cause I, you know, I could only tell what I want, but the fact that she's able to figure that out, I still don't get it. <laughs> Absolutely. And we, we talked about this a little bit at the beginning, but one of the things that is so cool about this film is that um, it's, you know, obviously it's a story about women and it's a story with two female leads, but it's also, you have so many women um, on the production team side of things. You have so many, uh, obviously having Gina as director and then having women in, um, you know, as department heads. Uh, Gina, tell us a little bit about, you know, sort of your goals in like assembling this team basically. The Avengers assembly. <laughs> um, I mean, it's, um, you know, for me, it, it's, uh, well, it, it's, it's two things because a lot of people think it's a PC thing. You know, you, you, you need to have inclusion and you need to have this many women and people of color and as if like there's boxes you can check. Though for me, knowing how I came up through the industry knowing how Terry came to be into my orbit and, and now 20 years later, still there. Um, I know that so many women have very short resumes only because of lack of opportunity and not because of talent. And um, so I have the ability, thankfully, to look past that and recognize who do I want to be on set with? Who is passionate about wanting to be there? Who's passionate about the story? Uh, because that that trumps a big resume. I want people around me who love what they do, who are good people, um, and who are hungry and uh, and just mad talented. And that's that's how Sarah, you know, came. That's again how how Terry's been with me for so long. And Tammy Riker and Haley Williams, who did special effects. I think she's the only female um, um, special effects supervisor in the business. And she came up under her father, who was, I guess, a giant in the industry. And when I met with her, I, you, God, she was so great. I just knew I wanted that energy and, and her stuff is great. All the explosions, all the blood and all that, that's, that's all Haley and, and that she has a true love of that. And Julia Michaels, who, who is our music supervisor. I mean, there's just so many people that are great at what they do. And I'm lucky to have them. There's no PC in it. I am lucky. And uh, I was just excited to put this group of women together in the hopes that now when somebody else looks at the resume, they've got the old guard on there and there will never be a question of can you do it? Yeah, I, having people who are, who are so passionate, I would imagine that would, you know, foster such a great creative environment. Yeah. You know, absolutely. I, I wanted to ask, Terry Lynn, uh, I, one of the things I love about this film is how it's obviously it's set in the present day, but you have, you know, it spans centuries and you, we see these, these flashbacks throughout history, you know, from an editing standpoint, how, you know, how tricky is that to sort of tell a story that, that spans, you know, so much time? Yeah, I mean, it can be really challenging depending on um, how you are interweaving it within the story. I mean, I think that with being able to within the old guard what i love about the old guard and how we discover who they are is is really through nile i mean I, I i kept saying as we were editing this film from an audience standpoint that we are nile and nile is us meaning that you know we're we're dropped into this story and and we get an early sense of who the old guard are certainly as warriors and as a team but we don't really get to know who they are as a people and um, their past and, and their vulnerabilities and uh, until Niall kind of comes into the story and then they start to kind of open up about who they are 
through their dialogues and conversations with her, which in se- which is a sense the same as their dialogue and conversations with we, the audience. And so I, I think that as in, in trying to kind of build this and structure this in a way that uh, you as an audience member could come in and feel a certain degree of, of um, that you start to care about these people and get to know who they are and, and, the, and what loss is. I mean, the thing is, is that on one hand, you know, immortality can seem like a really exciting, sexy thing, right? But at the same time, it comes at a cost, right? And, and each one of our characters has, has suffered that cost. And so I think within using the, the flashbacks in a way to kind of help define who they were as, as humans, as human people. And uh, I really liked the way that we approached that because sometimes I feel that a, a flashback can be, has a sense where it can sometimes feel like more of a device than an actual uh, portal uh, to a character. And so that was what I think you know, Jean and I really tried to do was it was to use them in a way that help you understand the characters themselves and and what they had gone through. And so that Niall would also understand that. And ultimately, when she finally does decide to kind of go back and, and save and, and be a part of this group, you've taken that journey with her. That makes sense. You're rooting it, sort of following this story through her eyes. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Sarah, I, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about was there what do you think was your most complicated um, uh, scene that you that you worked on? Um, I think um, the one that gave us the most sleepless nights was probably um, Niall when she takes Merrick out the window um, because <laughs> when we initially did that scene, uh, it was it was a different story at the beginning, and we went into pre-production. You know, we did sort of uh, previs with Gina. Um, and we talked about what was going to happen, planned it all out, um, which was all great. Uh, and then we, you know, we started shooting and the story changed, which is obviously that happens, which is fine. So again, we sort of changed the, you know, the, how we were going to do it and the thought process behind it. And then when we actually got to shoot it, it kind of changed again because of timing and location um, and all, all the things that happen when you're shooting. So it felt... Um, you know, it made me a little nervous, I'll be honest. Uh, so when we got everything together and we, you know, we started putting it together, I think we just, it was the shot that lasted the longest through post, you know, and there was times when we'd sit in a room and go, is it going to work? <laughs> and we were like, and I was like, of course it's going to work. It's going to be absolutely fine. Um, so I'll be honest, it gave me a few sleepless nights, uh, that, that scene. Um, but, you know, I mean, every time I've ever done a film, there's always, you know, a handful of shots that, you know, make you... Uh, have a few sleepless nights or slow, you know, turn slowly gray. So, you know, I kind of like the challenge of that because it, it kind of, you know, you just sort of push through it and you know, it's going to work out in the end, but it's just that sort of nail biting, you know, is it going to look good though? And, you know, so, yeah, but uh, see, Sarah, you never said that to me the whole time. You're like, okay, <laughs> it's going to be fine. And I'm, I'm believing I'm less you, reassure but... you, Gina. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, that... It's always going to be fine. It's just, you know, it's just until it is fine. It's always kind of makes you nervous up to that point. Um, so I think for me, that was probably the hardest one to sort of, you know, get right. But there was there was other little things that came and went throughout as well. You know, I think the regeneration was hugely important. So it's such a big part of the story, you know, and I think it's one of the few shots we had right at the end when it came to delivering, you know, the final shots was one of those. So, you know, um, but it was all good. All, all worked out in the end. <laughs> And you know, when I think when I think about the how much time we spent in the editing room talking about healing and scabbing and blood and bone breaks and it was it was there was a lot there was a lot of discussion about that as well we were just like blase about it so, oh yeah we'll make stuff blood. Yeah, by, by the end but yeah that that um the jump out the window like that was a a learning curve for me certainly in that. Uh, I mean, I pitched I was going to shoot that scene in my meeting with Skydance to get the film. And I just had this vision, um, you know, in Bourne, uh, there was a a shot that they did where uh, Jason Bourne jumps from one building to another through the window. And they had the camera guy behind doing the same leap at the same time. And I just thought that, wow, why don't we do that on an even bigger scale and, you know, and have Niall going out the window and, and the camera guy or woman being uh, right behind and making the leap as well. So it was so clear in my head that that's what I wanted to do and wanted to, again, the grounded feel and keep it real. 
And as Sarah said, because of schedule, because of logistics, because very few actors want to <laughs> show the <laughs> seven floors, I'm like, come on. Um, you know, obviously for, for safety reasons, that dream had to had to change. And, and it was hard for me, certainly, because it was such an important moment for the story and I, I didn't want anything to look fake. And it was daily conversations with Sarah. Do you promise it's not going to look fake? Do you promise, you know, that you will really feel her falling? And and so that the the length of time it took was me having to break past my initial thought of what I wanted it to look like and feel like. But ultimately, I am really happy with it. And um, you know, props to Sarah and props to Terry because there were you know times of them having to talk me off the ledge. You know, <laughs> like. Uh, can we get it better? But Sarah kept pushing and kept pushing until we were all happy. Sometimes that can be serendipitous where you all sort of work together and it, it all, it all comes together in the end. It's, it's a yeah. lot of hard work. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Terry? Was there a particular uh, scene or a sequence that you found um, really challenging or just required, you know, a lot of, um, you know, was, was particularly complicated? Wow. Um, it's all a blur now. It's all, it's all easy. <laughs> um, well, wow. I don't know, Gina, do you remember? I'm trying to, I mean, I, I found that, uh, I mean, for me, it was really about, uh, being able to just stay out of the way in some ways. I mean, it, it, but at the same time, I mean, even something like the kill floor, and uh, trying to look at a scene like that and determine, um, you know, how are we going to introduce the audience to the first person? I mean, once once they're shot, right, once they kind of get taken out and then the idea of then they start to slowly regenerate. And how do we how do we build that? How who who do we who do we see first? What's the first you know moment that you start to discover that's that? somebody's actually alive and then the balance between how long they regenerate how 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 long can you sit in that space uh, before somebody would particularly notice so there was always this balance of kind of trying to keep this within a, a reality right and at the same time um, create this environment where people are discovering something about these characters and so i, I felt i felt like i my memory was that the kill floor from that standpoint was was definitely a challenging one just from from the timing aspect of it and um and then i think just also i what i loved but it did took, take some time was kind of getting the i think the final uh scene where you see them kind of moving through merrick's uh merrick's uh offices and and just getting that that kind of that sense of their com where you finally see them working as a unit and, 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 and making sure that, that you're finally seeing the old guard in their glory and, and they're fin finally a working team and getting those rhythms together. I think that was also a challenging one. Yeah, you sort of have to, with, with the kill floor, you sort of set the tone. And then with that final one, it's like, okay, this is them in their like full, you know, like you said, their full glory. This is them at, you know, sort of the height of their powers, which is, is kind of fun. Yeah. 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 Um, we obviously have a lot of uh, SCAD, some SCAD students in the audience today. So I wanted to ask each of you, you know, whether you had any um, particular advice for, for students getting, getting started in this industry. Um, or something you wish you had known when you were first starting your career? Um, I mean, I always, I answer this question the same way because I was, you know, I went to UCLA film school and, and uh, I know how I felt and how um, mysterious it felt once I left those doors. Like, how do you even get in and what do you do? And for me, what has always guided me is passion. Um, you have to be passionate about what you're doing, whether you're a writer, whether you're a director, whether you're a vis effects or editor, be passionate about your work because this business is tough. It is absolutely tough. And you're gonna get a thousand no's, but you just need one yes. And what keeps you in that fight is if you're passionate about what you're doing. Um, so passion, 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 passion. 
Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I would add passion, persistence, and patience when it comes to being an editor. Um, I, I think that ultimately um, the editing room should always be a safe space, not only as for the editor, but for the director. It's a place, I, I have a sign on my, on my, uh, in my, I have a lot of signs in my editing room, but one of them is if first you don't succeed, destroy any evidence that you tried. I mean, it should be, it should be a place where you can, you can fit, you can succeed greatly and fail greatly and, and, and build and rebuild just like writing is rewriting, editing is re-editing and not to get too overwhelmed by it. Um, but just to kind of remind yourself, why are you in a scene? What is the purpose of it? What do you, what are the two characters? What are they, tr what are you, where are they trying to get to? Um, and, and not get too overwhelmed by, by the kind of the epicness of any given scene or, or project, but, but just try to kind of stay rooted in what the story is. And, and just as far as uh, being able to kind of navigate the business, find the people that you want to work with. If, if somebody inspires you, uh, reach out, try to connect with them. We're in a world now that in some ways COVID has put us all in these isolated spaces and we're working in a collaborative art and i feel that um if if, if, if there's if there's a filmmaker that inspires you or, or or an editor or a visual effects person anybody it never hurts to reach out and try to make some kind of connection uh with that person um i agree with gina actually i was going to say passion is a big one you really have to be passionate because it is really really tough um, and I'll say perseverance, obviously, is a big one. I mean, when I was coming up, there wasn't, um, there was no kind of education for visual effects at that time, no courses. Um, so I think it's great now there's so much access to, um, you know, this training. And I think a big one is mentoring. So I think if you can find yourself a mentor, you know, so you've got someone to ask advice to and, you know, just to help with your confidence and just asking questions, um, I think is really important. Um, so I think, you know, and just don't be afraid to ask and just, if it's something you really want to do, just, you know, keep pushing and pushing. Um, stubbornness helps a lot as well. <laughs> <laughs> that helps, absolutely. Um, and I'm curious, I, wa I want to throw this out to all of you, you know, um, this is, uh, is there something you got to do on this film for the first time or something that, that you're really, like, uh, some, something that, that sort of took you out of your comfort zone that you're, you're really happy with, with how it turned out? I wouldn't I mean, say comfort zone. I mean, for me, I, what I loved about it was that I got to work with, uh, well, of course, work with Gina, but it was great for me to work with with Sarah and Lisa, our visual effects producers. And um, I, I think that more than any film that I've worked on, this one had the most visual effects. And But not just visual, but I mean, visual effects that were were there to be organic or effortless. And again, not to be fantastical, but to to kind of, you know, help enhance the story in some ways, an organic way. And so what was great about this process for me was having um, both of them um, as collaborators and, and communicators. And, and I learned so much from this journey as far as what I mean, just, I mean, you watch it as an audience, but when you're really in the editing room and you have to help create these, these, these types of, 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 you know, visuals, I, I learned so much from both of them. So I'm, I'm really grateful. Sir. Yeah. Um, the collaboration for me was really, really good. I mean, particularly in the post-production side, when we, you know, we got to go, we went to LA and uh, worked with Gina and Terry out of the offices there. And that was a really, really nice experience. Like the, the bonds of the group that everybody had was lovely. All, you know, editors and music as well. And one of the things which I've mentioned before is um, what I love is you'd see Gina and Terry in the morning first thing, then they'd just be locked in an edit suite and you wouldn't see them again. But what was lovely was, um, you know, they'd do uh, every lunchtime regardless, pretty much. Everybody would leave wherever, whatever they were doing, whatever room they were in, and everybody would sit around a table and have lunch together. And that was like, I've never really done that before, I, I know, um, on a film. So that I really loved that collaboration, and it was it's kind of nice for you know everybody to like have a conversation, have a chat before you all go back and sit at your desks and you know to whatever time you're locked in there. So that that was really important, and also I think because of that, um, when we all went into COVID, sort of the lockdown. I mean, if we hadn't had that, I think that sort of closeness and the collaboration for a period of time, 
and got used to how you know we all work and how to view stuff to go into the remote or sort of lockdown and having to do it doing it this way I guess I think would have been a lot harder so um I thought actually that went pretty well you know considering we had to sort of do it all remotely um so that was a big learning curve it, for me uh I think Terry said it not necessarily a learning curve given um the experience with silver and black and, and being on that for a year and a half so I had at least had a head start so it didn't feel like a leap it felt more like a big step but the vis effects um I mean that was big to you know I think in everything we've done there's always been a little bit of vis visual effects but this was on such a whole nother level and it's funny too because going in I was again part of my pitch was this is not a vfx film I'm totally grounded and real there's only gonna be a couple sequences and then what 800 shots later uh, <laughs> uh come on now um but it was uh it, it was an amazing thing to work with sarah and I, I knew when i met with her for the first time it was like that's that's who i want to go on this journey with and you know you you don't know everything certainly going into something like this vis effects are it's, it's so i know what i want but how you do it i i still it amazes me um but I remember sitting with Patty Jenkins when I when I got the film, and that was the one thing she said. I mean, she said a lot of things, but visual effects is something that is going to be the trickiest thing to navigate. And just gave me some tips on on things to do because you have to make decisions really early because of the length of time it takes. And knowing once you make a decision, some things can't be pulled back, so be careful when when that happens. And having Sarah there to guide us through to and this sounds like a really low bar, which is terrible, but never condescending, never, I know better than you just listen. It was, it was just never that. It was such a beautiful, collaborative, supportive environment where we felt, Terry and I both, that we just had no limits on the imagination. We could think about something and then bring it to Sarah and, and she would figure it out or, or, you know, tell us why something might not be possible, but I don't think you ever actually did. Uh, say no, which yeah. is why I love her even more. <laughs> <laughs> well, like you said, like all of you have said, it, it really comes back to, you know, fostering that that sense of, you know, collaboration and communication with all the different department heads and, and everybody working together. And, and that I imagine would, you know, sort of help you stave off problems and, and you know, fix things and, and be able to talk things out would be so valuable. Yeah. Yeah, communication is everything. <laughs> and uh, it's Sarah said it was having her there for so many months to go through it was invaluable because when we were separated, um, it was, I think it was a full month. Every, every morning, uh, every, well, every night they would send us a batch of about 30 to 40 shots, download them. And then every morning, Sarah, Lisa, our uh, VFX producer, Terry and I would sit and I would have my 4K monitor in this office and, and Terry would have hers in her own office. And then uh, Lisa was in Ireland and, and That's right. Sarah was in London and we would go through the shots and talk about what worked, what didn't work. And, you know, as we're trying to finish the film and the fact that we had such a relationship and a trust, that's a big thing. We had a trust, um, that it made that, that process, um, it was good. It was fun. There were occasions of it being frustrating, but for the most part, it was the fact that we were so separated, it, it didn't actually feel that way. That makes a difference, absolutely. And we talked about this a little bit, but you know, I love that, I mean, one of the, the, the truth is that, you know, an action film like this with, with two female leads is, is still very much a rarity in the genre. Um, but this film, you know, since it's come out has, has been so successful. I mean, Gina, what do you hope audiences, you know, can take away from, from a story like this? Yeah, it is. Um, it's surreal. It, I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, Netflix called us all uh, the other day to let us know that what the numbers were, that they exceeded what had been announced previously. And I, it's it's amazing to 78 million people <laughs> it's just like saw the work. But it's not just about that. It's about the images that we got to put into the world that the world gets to embrace and be inspired by. And it really is Niall, this young black female hero, given how much 
Hollywood is complicit in what is going on in the world right now because of the lack of visibility of certainly black women and black heroes, the fact that the world, the world gets to see Nile, Joe and Nikki, this incredible badass couple is, is in the world and people are embracing them and, and falling in love with them. Uh, I, I just, I love that so much. And Quinn, so it, it just, it means a lot. And that's what we got to put into the world that this vision of, of women as warriors that is innate in us, that, that women around the world can see these characters and, and hope to be inspired by them as well. So it's, uh, it's, it's been amazing. Absolutely. And I would imagine, especially, you know, finishing the film, you know, in the middle of, of, of COVID and it would be so rewarding to finally get to, you know, be able to share, share it with everyone. Yeah, we were so fortunate to have two audience previews in theaters prior, like right before we got shut down. So at least we got to sit in a theater with, you know, each screen, I think at 250 people. So we, we got that. And that's the one I love theater so much. I love going to the movies. I love the collective experience of it. And that's that's been the hardest thing because we got to experience it um, twice with this film and get that real reaction. But the fact that it's on Netflix, that we were able to go come out when so many others were not and the absolute global reach of it. And thank goodness for social media in that we got to he have that immediate uh, feedback from fans and not just, you know, those that were in the theater, but people, you know, in Ireland and Ghana, you know, and in Thailand, it's, it's, you know, Netflix is absolutely changing the game. That makes a difference. Absolutely. All right, great. Well, I think that is all the time that we have. Um, I wanted to thank all of our panelists uh, for joining me and uh, thank you to everyone at home uh, for watching along with us. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. It's been great. Thank you.